This is Vituals Chess Noob Learning and Having Fun with Chess. One of my previous videos on the Napoleon attack is one of my best viewed videos on my channel. And that surprises me somewhat because I think the Napoleon attack is actually pretty bad, especially once you're out of the beginner level. So I'm going to make this video uh, after a game which reminded me of the Napoleon attack to just demonstrate how you can kind of just refute it really if you're playing with the black pieces. So what is a Napoleon attack? So it begins with e4, e5, and then white plays the immediate queen to f3. And the idea of Napoleon attack really is to then develop the bishop to c4 on the next turn and trying to line up for a scholar's mate type approach. And this potentially can work at the beginner level, but once people know how to refute it, it really isn't a good move. The interesting thing is, you know, some comments I've had on my channel uh, and also on my blog suggest that it works well for them. Well, that's kind of not what, you know, the Lee Chess Community Database suggests. It suggests that it really isn't that good an opening. Now, let's go back to this game. So, let's say someone does play uh, the Napoleon attack. Um, how should you play next? So with the black pieces, generally one of these two moves are good, what either of the knights. Now technically, I think the king's knight is the slightly better move. However, if white plays perfectly from now on, basically you end up in a fairly positional game with the queen slightly, you know, not quite in the right place. And of course, this is the problem for white with the Napoleon attack, that um, at a higher level, the best you can expect is a very positional game, but you might as well have just played an Italian game, or, you know, Gioco Piano. It's not as good as that. Now, for black, I would suggest actually developing the Queen's Knight. And the reason you would develop the Queen's Knight is that you can more rapidly do another attack. So very commonly here now, of course, uh, white will bring out that bishop, you know, trying to line up, uh, line those things up. And But now with black, you can play queen to f6, asking for a trade. And if white, uh, you know, accepts the queen trade, basically you play a queen this middle game, and you gain a point of tempo by developing your knight with development. And black is now just simply better. It, doesn't make very much sense for white. On the other hand, uh, if they choose to keep that position, play some other piece, let's say they play the knight, now we've got knight to d4 with an attack on the queen. And basically again, white is in some trouble. Pretty much they either need to go all the way back or take the queen. In either of those, uh, either of those choices, black wins tempo. So, now in this game, my opponent uh, opted to play the bishop's opening first. So against the bishop's opening, I usually play the queen's knight, and now we basically transpose into the, uh, the Napoleon attack. And I was reminded here because this is the usual setup I would play against the Napoleon attack. Uh, what do we do in this, uh, in this position? As we just said before, queen to f6. Now here, white has only one good move, which is to prevent the knight from going to that position, which is playing c3. That is their best move. However, if they play this move, again, we just end up in a highly, highly positional game. It's 0, 0, 0, perfectly fine for black. And again, if you're going to play the Napoleon attack and end up in a highly positional game, just play the Italian. Now in this game, my opponent played a very, very common move in this case, which is d3. And again, now we jump the knight forward, attacking the queen, but more than that, but also attacking the c2 pawn, which is of course an absolute fork of the king and rook. This is why in this position, white has only two moves. Either undevelop the queen, to d1 to defend, and of course then they've moved the queen out and back, lost two moves of tempo, or they will have to trade queens, which is actually their better move, uh, and then I get to develop my knight 
with tempo. And this, my friends, is how you basically nerf the Napoleon attack, and basically why the Napoleon attack is not very good. In this game, they play the best move, which is to trade queens. We now enter a queenless middle game. I develop my other knight. You know, I'm in a very good position. Uh, the rest of the game here um, basically demonstrates why it sometimes is a problem, you know, doing funny things with your queen without a clear coordinator attack. You know, they now decide to try to attack that knight. Uh, and why did I put that knight there? If you remember, it also attacks c2. So, absolute fork, I win the rook, uh, and basically now I'm out of the opening, up material. Basically all I have to do for the remainder of the game, which is what I did here, is just to play conservatively. I don't necessarily play the most accurately, but I don't have to. I try to play conservatively, consolidate my position, trade pieces when I can, move towards an end game, up material. So I develop my bishop, um, you know, they here, do you know, uh, forced to potentially defend, you know, against that, you know, it was an awkward move uh, with that knight, uh, so that's fine. Uh, I now uh, develop my d-pawn, have an attack on that knight, uh, they're sort of forced to try to defend, you know, you can see they're just scrambling here because of that loss of temper. I take, damage that structure, that king is going to be stuck in the center, uh, and now, you know, damage pawn structure, not good for white. I now just uh, short castle calmly, king out of the center, nice and safe. They try to whack forward, that's fine. They can take, that's not a problem for me. Captures, captures. Try to attack the bishop, that's fine. Just step back. Um, and here, they're you know, potentially trying to take the knight, that's fine. But their bishop is just about trapped. Because now I have b5. Have a look at that bishop. Can't go there. Can't take without being captured back, can't go here without taking, can't go here without being taken, and of course can't go there without being taken. So I've trapped the bishop, so they play the best move, you know, they have to sack their bishop for a pawn. So here I'm basically now up a lot of material, plus four, very, very good, and now try to force trades of pieces. It's all very good for me. And here I think, I think white just kind of gave up a little bit, so takes, that's fine, take. With, uh, with a skewer, take that rook as well. Uh, and here, pretty much, you know, they're a good sport, they're playing on, uh, but you know, I'm in the end game, up two pieces. It's a matter of just trying to work out the quickest way to mate. So take, that's fine, moves the knight, um, that's fine. This, you know, I try to push, easy, you know, there we go, check, and now I've got a checkmate with pawn. Killer pawn, good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to just not play the Napoleon attack as white, and also to learn this tactic to nerf the Napoleon attack when you've got the black pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.